What is up the beautiful people of Rock Brisbane? Welcome to the Where Love Touches People podcast. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode in the Catch Up With segment. Let's find out what our guests have been up to lately. Welcome to Where Love Touches People. My name is Nikita. And my name is Philip. And we will be your host today. How are you beautiful people? We hope that you are doing well today. This week, we have another international guest. Who? Can anyone guess who it is? Very special. It is very special guest. <laughs> he used to live in Brisbane, Queensland for a long time. Mm. And then now he lives in Indonesia, Bandung. And his name is... Bonar! Welcome Bonar! How are you? Hi guys! I'm so good! Good to be here! For the listener who doesn't know you, who is Bonar? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Wow, okay. Um, so, if you don't know me, that means you probably just joined uh, BBIC in the last couple of years. Because um, I am Indonesian, I've, I grew up in Brisbane, and I've been part of... Uh, I guess BBIC or Rock Brisbane since uh, 2000, I guess, and um, and in that time I've uh, yeah I've, I've led worship I've uh, you know helped out here and there, and uh, and then I left to go to Indonesia in 2018 to uh, to pursue a girl and get the girl. <laughs> wow! So I've been here ever since. Yep, yep, and also I think I want to add something. We have a sure. saying. If you know Bonar, you know everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Back then. Yeah, back then. But now I see like, I, I watch the online uh, service and things and then sometimes I, I don't recognize the new faces. But that's really cool. That means you guys are growing, which is really, really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Bonar is also worship leading in this church and used to be our prophetic leader. Mm-hmm. And now he's ta- being taken care by Sangam. Um, yes. And... What else, Nikita, that we want to ask? Um, like, how's life in general, Ko? Like, how's families doing? What have yeah, you sure. been, like, doing lately? Okay. Yeah, a bit of an update. So, um, so the girl I married, her name is Jessica Abraham. And she's a pastor's kid, just like oh. Tiffany. Um, you know, and so I've been helping out with the church, actually. Because um, I used to work for a Christian organization based in the Sunshine Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was still doing that until last year. So I was, wor- I was living in Indonesia, but I was working for the Sunshine Coast company. But then um, my, our son was born uh, last July, Yay. July 2019. So, um, so he's one year old and one month. So he's 13 months old uh, at the moment. And so at that time, I, I stopped working for uh, CV. And then I like, took a three-month break just to be uh, a father, um, you know, a full-time dad. And then after that, um, started helping out with the church because uh, my father-in-law is a, a pastor here in Bandung. And so I've started helping with the church. And now I'm the head of media, actually, wow. for the church. And so if you can imagine, uh, after COVID, because of COVID, uh, the, you know, uh, I guess it's the same everywhere. The church just has to close. And, um, and so basically we've moved everything online and everything's now media. So you can imagine the, I guess the challenge, but also the excitement that brings to the head of media role that I'm yep. actually in at the moment. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh-huh. So, uh, I want to ask you a little bit because the Bonar that I know is the, uh, the single Bonar. So who hasn't <laughs> got family yet, who mm-hmm. hasn't had a a kid yet so mm-hmm. i want to ask a little bit what's the difference now living in brisbane queensland and then now you're living in uh, indonesia bandung with a family so tell me a little <laughs> bit about that yeah it's a bit of a i think yeah nearly like a one, 180 degree change to be honest because i guess back in in brisbane it's about you know uh yeah i was i was single i haven't had i didn't have a girlfriend for I think nearly as long as you, Phil, like, yeah, uh, so we do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we, had, we had that joke before, like eight years or more. Um, and so, you know, it was everything about work, church, uh, uh, going to Sunnybank to hang out and eat food. Uh, you know, Market Square is my hangout. And, uh, and you know, and basically that. And like, uh, like the last couple of years I was in Brisbane, I was really into biking. 
So basically, it was just all about me, you know, all about those activities, church, work, and, uh, and my mom as well uh, was there, you know. But then uh, here in, in Bandung, uh, obviously, that that's changes quite a bit, you know. Um, first, having a girlfriend uh, is, is different, uh, you know, and then the girlfriend turning into fiancé, uh, you know, and preparing for all that, um, you know, uh, you probably missed out on all the preparation, Phil, because you had an online wedding, right? Yeah. So it's simpler <laughs> and everything. And then, you know, you know how weddings are in, in, in Indonesia, you know, like um, thousands of people, you know, getting everything ready and all that kind of stuff. So that took a lot of, uh, you know, attention and focus as well. Um, but then um, actually starting a, a family, like just uh, first uh, us as a husband and wife. And then uh, we really only had a month to really enjoy that, uh, you know, couple time, to be honest, that honeymoon period, uh, because uh, we got married in, uh, we were married legally in, in Brisbane in October last year. Uh, no, 2018, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, um, and so uh, after that, in like around December, we found out that Jess was pregnant. And then so basically, we haven't had much time to like wrestle as like, you know, a husband and wife, but then now we have to like figure out like preparing for, for a child. So, um, so it's really, really, uh, I guess like, yeah, quick progressions. And I guess because I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm 36 now. So it's kind of like, you know, playing catch up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's all right. God's timing is always perfect, Bon. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> Very true. So, Cole, you mentioned about the COVID situation in Indonesia. Is there any yeah. like anything different with your new family and how is it like going on um, yeah yeah how is your sure. new normal uh, yeah the new normal um it's actually yeah, you know like with everything there's always a if you can see the positive side of it um you can always learn something and you can always improve on things um for for us personally like as, as a family to be honest um we we got back into work like three months after Benaya was born. Mm. All right. So we had like a three month, uh, like, uh, off period, um, like maternity and paternity leave. Um, and then we started working again, right. Working for the church. And so that meant like leaving Benaya with a, a nurse, right. Um, which is, I guess, uh, it's a privilege. Uh, it's a blessing, but also a bit of a, I guess a bit of a trap as well, you know, um, it, I guess it makes it easy, but also it's very then easy to just, oh, you know what, Ben will be okay because he's got the nurse. And so we were, you know, we were kind of still doing our normal thing of like going to church, doing ministry, you know, like traveling and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I was actually in the back of my mind is like, is this actually how parenting should be? You know, uh, is it really okay just to leave Ben like for like, you know, 10 hours in the day? uh to to work in a way so with covid because we've been for, forced to work from home mm -hmm. um that's the actual blessing for us is actually that i can actually connect with ben you know um because you know we're working from home obviously there's times like like this where i'm in a meeting or or things like that where you know ben's either with jess um or with the nurse but at least you know i can still see him like we can have lunch together um you know we wake up and all that kind of stuff so there's there's it's just like such a precious uh, time for us to be able to do this. So I'm not saying COVID is a good thing because obviously it's not, you know, there's a lot of people suffering, uh, a lot of deaths and stuff. But um, I think, again, like God's timing for our, in this season for our lives, it's really helped us to really just connect as a family, uh, build our, our relationship stronger as well, to be able to build that like day-to-day -day, um, connection with Ben I am as well. Yep. I agree with you. We have to be able to look the positive sides in every situation. Mm -hmm. And then like what yeah. you said, it's a good thing because uh, in terms of parenting, I'm not a parent yet, but I know the theory. <laughs> in terms yeah. of parenting, I think early, early stage is important for mm -hmm. parents to be uh, like physically uh, involved in that, right? Yes. So I think you're doing yeah, a yeah. good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, um, yeah, I mean, like, we were kind of very eager to, very easy for us to jump back to, like, our old routine, right? Um, when we were, like, still without a child. But then this kind of really forced us to actually know uh, Benaya is the priority. Um, work can kind of work around 
being a parent as well. So that's that's really taught us uh, some things. That hopefully, if uh, you know, if we have to go back to work uh, again, like in terms of going back to the office, yeah. that we'll still somehow be able to to uh, have this connection still with him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. I think you will. Okay. Uh, I wanna ask you a little bit too about the online church. Because sure. we're sort of doing the same thing. We're doing the online church here mm-hmm. too. And then you're doing the online church. And this month's topic is actually talking about worship experience, right? Wow. And then okay. you were like our worship leader in this church before. And then you mm-hmm. also uh, used to be our prophetic leader. And then now you're the head of media in uh, Bandung. So mm-hmm. what do you think uh, the difference between uh, worshiping at home with online church and worshiping at the physical church? Sure. Okay. Uh, it's a very interesting question. And I guess that's why there's a lot of pros and cons about online church, especially in Indonesia. Um, there were a lot of uh, churches that resisted when, uh, especially when, when COVID was just starting to come in. Some churches were still like, no, um, we're just going to keep opening. You know, we're going to still open. Um, but obviously um, the government actually shut Uh, services down so that kind of actually you know forces us to go online and I think for me I guess it wasn't that much of a difference because I was always already like I was already watching online online sermons or online worship you know like uh, I was watching even when I was in like Australia when I was because I I used to drive from Brisbane to Sunshine Coast right Mm -hmm. Um, that's like an, an hour and a half drive which is which is amazing because that's 120 Ks. 120 Ks in Indonesia, like Jakarta, Bandung, that's like a five hour or eight hour drive depending on, uh, you know, depending on the traffic. Um, but when I, was, when I used to do that, I would actually like either be listening to worship music or you know, listening to a sermon and you know, God still spoke through that. You know, I could have uh, an encounter with God while I'm driving up to the Sunshine Coast. Uh, you know, and I'd be, maybe I'd be crying, but hopefully, you know, I, I was praying and stuff, but not closing my eyes because I was driving. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to crash. Uh, but yeah, so for me, doing like that transition was quite easy. So um, I could still have that connection with God because, you know, even, even if you're at church, even if you're at the church building, um, if you're not participating and you're not engaging with the worship, you know, you could be like, your mind could be somewhere else. Yeah. So, and then you probably want to encounter God as well. So it's not about the physical location. It's really about your mindset, your heart and your attitude, right? So if you're ready, you know, and you're thirsty, you want to, you want to worship God. Um, for me, it doesn't really matter where, where that location is. Of course, in a church building, you're, I guess it's easier for you to do that because there's other people that can like, you know, mm-hmm. build, build the mood and, and things like that. But for us, at, uh, for us as a family doing the, the church at home, um, you know, we'd, we'd actually set time aside as well. Um, say if there's an 8, 8 a.m. service, then, you know, uh, the family would gather at 8 a.m. and, uh, you know, put it on the telly and, like, worship together. But, of course, because we are, like, we were involved in the making of the online service, right? Like, I'm yeah. the head of media. Dad's usually preaching or, you know, there's, you know, we've actually then like review and comment on the, on the online church experience as well. So, um, oh, that, that, that text shouldn't be there. There's a typo there, you know, so that kind of takes it away for us as well. So, so that's kind of, I guess there's a bit of a difference there. Yep. Yep. I think we experience the same thing too, because yes. our online church start at 9 a.m. and then it finishes mm. at 10, right? And then mm. usually after 10 o'clock, there's a lot of text messages. Oh, I think we need to change this. We need to do this. this, this. So I think yeah, I, can, yeah. I can imagine the focus of everyone just like looking, looking yeah. for room of improvement is a good thing. But yeah, I yeah. think we kind of like, uh, you know, not yeah. focusing to the real thing. Especially the <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So the other thing with online church is actually um, in Indonesia, there's, a, there's this trend called uh, church flicks. Where, um, so basically, like, if you're, like, I'm part of uh, GBI Bethel, right? Mm-hmm. But then there's also a tendency for me to actually watch, you know, uh, I might watch JPCC for this week. Or mm-hmm. I might actually watch, you know, like, Elevation or Hillsong or, yep. you know, uh, Rock as well, Rock Brisbane. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, that whole thing of, like, uh, church being on demand mm-hmm. um, is, is actually a, you know, it can be a good thing. Because then you're actually, you have access to different um, 
different different message, different sermons, different worship experiences. So, you know, um, we, and we can't limit that. We can't as a church go, oh, you're part of our church, so you can't watch other churches. You know, that's, yeah, yeah. that's selfish or that's, you know, that's limiting to your, your congregation. Mm-hmm. And so it's very actually a good time to, to really be a Christian and actually just, to, if you want to soak up, uh, you know, like the teaching, the messages and the worship experience, um, mm-hmm. it's available to you. So, you know, go ahead and do it. Wow. So the church flix is something like Netflix, but is related to sermon and present worship things. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not an official site. Of, it's not like a churchflix.com, but just the concept of like the church is available, you know, 24-7. Uh, you, know, you yeah. can just click on YouTube, uh, you know, and you'll see like lots of different churches available. So you don't necessarily have to go to your home church. But of course, um, for me, I like to go to my home church first. To kind of yeah. like connect with the you know the pastor and then you know uh, some of the people there, um, and then if I have time and I want to watch someone someone else, then I can do that as well. Yep, yep, yep. That's mm-hmm. good. I guess like I am. Um, I like the idea that the border between church itself, like it's like. It's broken down. Yeah, it's yeah, broken, broken down. Broken so there's down. no like this is my church, it's your church, yes. something like that. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. How about your church? I mean, like, is it online? Is it offline? What is the format now? Yeah, sure. Um, we're still online. I know there's some churches in uh, in Indonesia who have started uh, on-site uh, services. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tried it in August for the first time, uh, first week of August. Um, people had to register, um, you know, and then we had to do all the protocols, so masks, face shields, uh, mm-hmm. wash our hands and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, we haven't done it again yet, so we've kind of postponed it because the first week of August, we trialed it. Um, and of course, there's like a, there's a limit to your, how many people you can have at your event, yep. at your venue. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's like 20% of your capacity. So mm-hmm. the main hall at our church seats 2,000. So um, I think we were we were allowed to like have like at least like 200 or like 300 left something like that, but for that particular first one, uh, around 70 people turned up. Yeah. So for us, it's like you know, um, people are still being cautious as well. They're they're still not sure whether it's a good thing or not. But then of course in Indonesia, our consideration for not having it again was um, we had lots of public holidays in August. Yeah. So the first week we had Idul Adha, and then the second week we had uh, uh, Independence Day. And yeah. I've got a special guest right here at the moment. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Oh, hi, hi Ben. Hi. <laughs> you guys can't see him, but Benaya is here. Hi, hi Benaya. Ben. Say okay, hi. He looks like you. Sorry, listener. <laughs> We're just looking at Bonar's baby at the moment, <laughs> and he's so cute. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, in August we had so many um, public holidays, and during the public holidays, um, the numbers of COVID cases would go up. Yeah. All right, so it spiked, and so we just didn't want to take the chance of like, oh no, he wants his mama, <laughs> <laughs> he wants his mommy. All right, there you go. All right, okay. Um, yeah, so sorry. So uh, public holidays and cases going up, and so we just didn't want to. We didn't want to risk it, you know. Um, one of the one of the reasons um, one of the sayings that we really adhere to is that you know you go to church to find life, yep. right? The church is a life giving place. You know you you find life there, but if you go there and then there's actually a chance of dying, mm. then you know it, it's such a it's such a shame. You know, and to be honest, uh, we we want to be responsible because we we're a big church. And, you know, we want to be responsible to our congregation and also to, to the larger public as well, I guess. Um, and we didn't want to be like another cluster, like another church cluster. So that's, yep. that's, that's in our, in our uh, thinking as well, you know. Yep. Hmm. And also, I think it's good things to also discuss this, like, because we, we also going online for a long time now. And then mm-hmm. we also already plan to go back. And then every time... We are planning a date. We set a date already, and then mm. two weeks before, there's always another cases coming up. Mm. So we just like yeah. not, like we have the same mindset. We don't want to risk yeah. it. We don't want to uh, 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 take the chance that people might get infected through our church. So mm. we just postpone mm. it. So this is the second yeah. time that we postpone it. <laughs> yeah, we, we I think I think that's very wise. That's really good. I I I'd agree with that. Yeah. 
And also, what do you think is the important factors? Because this is an online chat, so we're not meeting person to person, mm-hmm. right? So with the mm-hmm. fellowship, with the like uh, the youth and everything, um, what do you think is the important factor to build and maintain the online church? Okay, so online church only happens on well, technically Sunday, but of course uh, we we leave it on YouTube for you know on demand. Um, yeah, so for us that's the ca- same case as well. But for me, um, so you can have that experience of uh, you know getting the the message from a preacher uh, like so once a week. But then I think what's key to maintaining uh, the church and also that sense of community is definitely small groups. Mm. Um, you know, like uh, cell groups and things like that, you know, like uh, midweek activities. One thing that we, we, we do at church is actually um, we really want to empower the families to, um, to, to step up and actually be the, be the church at home. Mm. Mm. One of the first things we did uh, during the pandemic was actually uh, publish uh, family altar guides. So we actually want to encourage uh, families to, you know, because they're at home. Uh, most of the case, if you're a family, you know, father and mother and then the kids, they're at home. They've got nothing better to do. Like they're working from home or, or studying at home. Uh, we, we encourage them to, to set aside some time, like an hour uh, to actually just, just to build a family altar, uh, you know, worship together, um, uh, read a verse, read a Bible uh, passage, and then, you know, just discuss it. And so our church created like a, like a weekly guide that, that will help them through that. And as an example, our family used to live stream uh, every day, uh, Monday to Saturday, every 5 p.m. Uh, that kind of uh, experience, you know, just uh, just the family altar experience where we just worship and then we read a passage and we just, you know, we just share what's, what, what's in our hearts. Uh, and then due to the nature of the internet, uh, people started asking questions, you know, and then... Um, uh, my father-in-law is is quite the theologian, so he's very renowned for his um, strong biblical teachings. Yep. So people would ask, like, you know, what's what do you get, what do you think about the Trinity? You know, what do, what do you think about um, this verse in the Bible? What about the end times? Is COVID the, you know, the end times? Is Jesus coming back? You know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, that actually just brings people into like uh, a spiritual growth as well. So during this time of, um, you know isolation and things um people can still grow spiritually um and that's what's needed like you know so don't just rely on your sunday experience but um from day to day uh every every day there's always a chance to you know build your connection with god and build the connection with uh the people in your community as well uh through small groups uh or even like online bible studies and things like that yeah it's interesting that uh Church used to be like Sunday activities, like you worship and then you come to the church and then like listening to sermon. But like nowadays, like it's happen every day and so you bring it to your family and then your community, which is, That's which it. is good. Yeah, it's become genuine. It's become like real. So we're not, the church is ourselves. Ourselves is a church, right? It's not just a building. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yes. Mm. So what do That's you it. find like, um, uh, what is the challenges of the new normal church? Uh, what do you think, Ko? Uh, have you yeah. heard like someone complaining? I mean, like, uh, is there any story? Uh, how would you respond to that? Sure. Um, of course, there's a lot of people, uh, especially the older generation. Uh, so technology is uh, something of a hindrance for, for them. Um, so, you know, people, especially early, early on in the, in the pandemic, Mm -hmm. people thought like, oh, you know what, I'll just, uh, I won't go to, um, like I'll I'll stop going to small groups because, um, it's, it's off. I can't meet Mm -hmm. with people, you know, I'll just wait for like a month or two months and then, and then we'll, we'll go back to our normal way, you know, the old way, like we'll, we'll gather again at someone's house and you know, that kind of thing. But obviously it's it's been like what six months or more and so we can't we can't have that mindset of like i'll wait for the old normal to come back because obviously uh probably it's not coming back you know so we have to get used to new normal and so with those people we're actually you know you actually have to be a bit more proactive in like helping them get onto the technology and like i guess just um adjusting our expectations because sometimes like maybe we just like oh you know what your your home group you can just do it on zoom or you can do it on Google Meet, you know. Um, but then some of these people, like, they they can't uh, even get on Zoom or, you know, like, their phones uh, can't support it or things like that. 
um, we've had to do, like, you know, we have to be a bit more creative. Okay, let's just do it on, a, on, a, on WhatsApp. And for the sharing, you could do like voice notes because um, it takes up less data, you know, and uh, it's very easy for them to do it. So if you want to share something, you can chat, but then if you don't want to type it up, then you can just, you know, record your, your, your voice, you could record your message, and then the others will listen to it and then, and then uh, you know, reply back to that. And then you can, you can pray and all that kind of stuff. You can still do it um, through technology. And um, there's just like different levels, obviously, that you can, uh, if it's very high tech, you can use Zoom or things like that, or, you know, just use whatever they can um, to, to, to really, you know, to serve them. That's kind of the thing. So many options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can be creative with it, right? That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's no excuse that, oh, I don't have Zoom. I don't know. I, I can't. I don't have laptop. Yeah, but everybody has a phone. If you're in yeah, Brisbane, yeah. I'm sure you have like a, at least a smartphone. Line. Nobody has a Nokia anymore. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what I'm saying is like, you cannot say that, oh, I don't have time anymore because like right yep. now you have plenty of it. So That's it. That's it. It's still a matter of priority at the end of the day. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to yeah. prioritize God, um, whether you're, you know, back in the old days or now in the new normal, you still have to prioritize God. Um, there's just new ways of prioritizing him, that's all. Yep. So I think yeah. also these situations make us more focusing things on God. So because yeah. before we busy with ourselves, busy with works and everything, and now we just got so many, so much free time and we don't know mm. what to do. Well, come back <laughs> to God, right? <laughs> that's it. That's perfect. And I think because of that realization that we're, um, you know, like, Mortality in terms of like the, this, this disease can, can get anyone really. And, uh, you know, we've had people in our lives who have been affected. Uh, and, you know, we've had, uh, thankfully, like none of my family have been affected, but we've had church members whose family have been affected, you know, and passed away because of COVID. Um, that kind of just brings you back to like, hey, you know, life is, is precious. And um, as much as possible, you want to you wanna be able to connect to God and also be able to connect others to God as well. And so, you know, that kind of realization that um, our life is, you know, very precious and that God has already saved us, we have to be thankful, but then also kind of spread that word to, to everyone else as well. Uh, I just want to get a feedback from you because we've been doing online and everything, and then I believe you watch us too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yep. what do you think about our online services? Like there is... Of course, like uh, what to be improved and then what is a good thing, what is needs to be improved on our online services? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I haven't watched the latest ones, to be honest, because I've just been uh, a bit busy. But the other stuff that I've watched, I, I really like your setup, the new setup mm -hmm. with the, the LED strips. Yeah. It's very modern. I like it. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, yeah. And I think... Um, but there's sometimes uh, the the speakers like I think you're usually host, right? Lip. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, you could use a bit of light. I know you. I know you're a very humble man. You don't really want to shine, but <laughs> dude, get some lighting on your face so that we can see you. <laughs> I'm, I'm so awkward in front of camera for some reason. No man, you're doing why. really good. It's so different. No, man. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's one thing that uh, people have had to learn. You know, like talking to a camera yeah. as opposed to talking to an audience is definitely different. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, you guys are doing well. Uh, Pastor Hani is really good at that as well. Yep. Um, so he, he's used to that. Um, we are trying a, a few things of like, that's why we're doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. We've been doing the worship from home video also. And yeah. Then, yeah. So I think, yeah, we yeah, I really try like to that. catch more people on online too. Yeah. That's it. And I think that's why like, yeah, you connect with, uh, with people on different platforms and different ways. Um, yeah, I think for me, I was really blessed by the, by the worship one with, um, with Andrew and yep. uh, Bang Jebi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was really well done. I really enjoyed that. And I think we're actually going to steal that idea for our church. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, can, you can make your own. I think that's really cool. With online, you can just, uh, you know, you have, everybody has their own audience. Um, so it's, it's really cool. I guess like uh, with all the services and then... Uh, a time that we make, we believe then it also have to be like two-way communication. How should the congregation like act in this new normal or church situation? What do you think? Of? Okay. Um, I think with the, with the online church on Sundays, um, for us, we, we premiere our video. Mm -hmm. So during that time, um, we have people who are on standby in the chats. Yep. 
Um, so, you know, they can greet people, especially uh, if, uh, if they're regular uh, visitors, then most of the ushers would know who they are and they'd greet them and that have a bit of a, a you know, a bit of a two-way conversation there. But um, I think a really cool example is happening in our youth church, actually. The, for our youth service, uh, they run it on the Life Church uh, platform called Online Church, online.church. Yep, yep. yep. Um, so with that one, you go to a website. Our one is called, I think, BethelYouthBDG.online.church. Um, and that one has more of a, you know, like a congregational, uh, feel to it where there's a, there's a host, there's an usher and, um, you know, people can ask to be prayed for and things like that. And, um, and in the actual online video themselves, so the preacher would actually go, Hey, type this in the chat. Like if, so if there's a, you know, if there's a quote or a Bible verse, or like if they're talking about, you know, um, you got to have faith, for example, they'd actually say to the, to the camera, like, Hey, put I got to have faith on the chat, you know? And so the chat, the chat uh, would really just like, it would just blow up uh, with people just typing it up and, you know, saying amens and all that kind of stuff. Cause usually when, uh, back when we were meeting at the church, the preacher would go say, can I hear an amen? Yeah. Now yeah. it's like, can I see an amen typed up on the chat? You know, that know. kind of stuff. So that's, that's very interactive for, for the kids, for the youth. That's really engaging. Yeah. Um, I'm finding for the general public, uh, especially for the older people, that's not too much what they're looking for. They're, they're happy just to, you know, just to watch and absorb the message. But mm -hmm. I guess if you want to connect with the like millennials and the young ones, I think that's a good way. Cause then uh, they actually have, um, they have games as well, like chat games uh, after the service. Uh, Cause you know, usually after the service, like the youth don't just go home, right? They, yeah. they hang out at church. And so this one, they hang out at the chat. Um, so that's, that's one way that you can, you know, create engagement and, and things like that. So you can still have that feel of, of community and connectedness, even if you're doing online church. Mm. Mm, that's a good idea yeah. to maximize the engagement with people. Yeah. Okay. So which one do you prefer? Online church or offline church? I think, I think both have their merits. And to be honest, it depends on my mood. <laughs> but sometimes you know you just have that feel like oh you know what i just want to i just want to be at home and i want to worship and i want to i want to just listen mm -hmm. um so that's really cool but then of course of course i do miss like that feel of like congregational worship where you know you're singing together uh and you can hear you know like the, the congregational sound of worship is definitely builds an atmosphere yeah. um so i think uh it's 50 50 for me <laughs> i can't i can't pick which one's better to be honest <laughs> Um, I guess because we're, we're comfortable, like our generation, we're comfortable with, with you know, with online things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we watch online, we, we engage online, we listen to music online. So I think it's an easy transition for us to, to kind of just online church. Yep. So, yeah. Oh, where do you think this is going? Like, what will the future church look like? What do you think? Wow. Okay. Um, so this is actually, I'm actually privileged to be part of a group uh, here in Indo called uh, NN40. Uh, which is, uh, it's short for now and next 40. Um, and so if, if, you under, if you're familiar with the church history in Indonesia, the last 40 years have been kind of like a great revival, especially with the charismatic movement yeah. from the 60s and 70s. And then now the people who were like young back then are now like old. They're actually like heads of churches and heads of uh, denominations. They're actually now thinking like, okay, so what would the next 40 years look like? And they're actually engaging, they're involving like young leaders like in their 30s and 20s to kind of start working uh, towards that. You know, what, what does that look like? Is that actually mm -hmm. just an online church or do we still need to meet at a church building or what does that look like? Um, so we are grappling with this, this issue of like, what will the church look like in the next 40 years? So I can't give you a definitive answer yet, but I mm -hmm. think um, we, have to be, we have to be comfortable with online church with online experiences. I think that's, that's the key takeaway for now. Um, obviously there is still a need to, to meet uh, when it is safe to do so. That's still a good way to bond and, you know, build relationships and do life together that way. Um, but I think online it's, it's, it's more about your, I think family comes first, you know, the people that you can actually connect with um, at home. If you have a good, strong faith in your home and in your families, I think that will be a good base for churches because then if the churches are just a, you know, like a collection of individual people, then it get it gets broken down quite easily during a pandemic like this. Hmm. But if the families are strong, 
you can still grow spiritually in the families, then when the time comes um, to be able to meet at church, then, you know, it's going to be even stronger and even better. Um, so you can still impact uh, your family, your friends that way, and then uh, towards the nations as well. Wow. wow. Oh, so many takeaways yeah. from this conversation. Got a lot of good <laughs> insights. Like yeah. I was ready to adjust to new situation, yep. being creative. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then also find a positive side in every situation. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Bonar, for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, Thanks for having uh, me. Yeah. Thank you for being a guest. <laughs> <laughs> Hope to see you soon in, I don't yeah. know, here or Indonesia. Yeah, well, to be honest, I was supposed to be in Australia uh, next month. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, I, remember that. <laughs> I mean, I, technically, I can still get into Australia because I'm Australian and mm-hmm. Benaya has dual citizenship. Um, but I think once, if we do go there, I don't think we can go out. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, can't do that at the moment. But yeah, no, looking yeah. forward to be able to meet with you guys uh, physically at one day. Um, but still, I, I still watch you guys on, uh, on online as well. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you very Thank much, Bona. We will see you again next time. All right. Sure. Bye. Anytime. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening. Our old podcast releases every Wednesday at 8 a.m. If you want to reach us out, please do so through our email, IG, or YouTube account, which you can find through our profile. See, see you, you next time. time.